So the yacht found itself in Gibraltar. We had to pack the sails up and ship them to Gibraltar in time to meet with the yacht, in time to meet with our, our sea trial crew and our movie maker who was recording our every step. So that's a logistical challenge, which fortunately went swimmingly well. Sea trial team sailed from Gibraltar back to Palma and was able to test all the sails in the inventory uh, in their wind range and wind angle. The sea trial is our way of ensuring that the, sea, the sails fit. We know how they should fit, we know where everything goes because we've designed every single detail of the sails. So the moment we, the sails leave the loft, we already know they're going to fit. I've measured the mast, I've measured the old sails. There's a quality control process. More of an unknown factor is the flying shape. Will the sails look as we designed them? And that's the crux of it. You know, how does design meet reality? That's the other aspect of sea trials. To take pictures, report back to the designers and engineers and say, good job guys. What we designed actually came to real life. So we're finally on board Inco, boat is in the water, sails are on board and time to, to fit some sails. So uh, a very important day, the plan is to fit all the sails, try everything and hopefully everything is fine. So I think you will find this out at the end of the video. Usually our sea trials are you know, three, four, five hours and that's it. And this usually becomes quite stressful because you need the right conditions, let the sails bed in and take the shape. It's a great opportunity when you can spend a couple of days sailing on the boat, especially going offshore, and just check to everything and give you really a peace of mind that you did a good job. So while setting the sails for the first time, I guess it's important just to be slow and careful and just to make sure that everything is fine and don't force anything, you know. So if something doesn't fit, something looks wrong, just stop, think about it and, and take it easy. So the plan today is we go with the mainsail first, then we're gonna go up with the jib, uh, and then depending on the timing and the weather, we'll try the Code Zero, the IFS and the new staysail. So the steps to put the mainsail on. So the mainsail is kind of halfway prepared. So we have all the battens in already and we have all the cars on the mainsail. So what we're going to do, we're just going to slowly hoist the mainsail up and fit every single car to the track. Because if you look up, we have a little hole in the track where we can remove a piece of track and that allows us to fit all the cars easily. So we will have one guy in the harness hanging up there, manually fitting the cars up and one person on the halyard. And then it's like any other mainsail, tack, clue, and, and that's it. Yeah, usually big mainsails are the, are the difficult ones to fit, so, and it takes a bit more time, a bit more people. Uh, other sails are a bit easier and faster to, to fit and remove. So the first part of the day went really well. We got the main sail up reasonably quickly. And to be honest, it looks, looks really good at the moment. So I'm really happy at this stage. So at the moment we need to adjust the, let's say the tack lashings, the clue lashings a bit to get everything right, uh, to be able to fine tune the sail 100%. So at the moment we're just doing these little things, but that's not the main goal of the day. The first is get them on, check the geometries, and then slowly start working on the little details.
So we're getting the jib ready. That means we're getting the battens in. And these have a furling battens, SeaTech furling battens. So we're doing these little bungee elastic lashings. As soon as we get the battens done, we're basically just gonna go straight up. And that's it, pretty simple. These furling battens uh, are getting more and more common on the bigger boats because you can then really have a nice shape of the jib. You, have, you can have some roach, but then you can also furl it. So there's, there's a very clever Kiwi design where the two little shells, and when you start furling, they join together and basically just rolls up nicely. So, you know, in the sail you have a stiff batten, but when you want to furl it, it just goes and furls quite easily. So, really nice system. Perfect for bigger boats. Yeah, because the, the jib is always on the forestay and furled, so there is no need to go up and down or anything. So, go up, furl it and, and leave it until the next time you go sailing. So, the leech of the jib, uh, you can probably even see it here, a little change in the colors. So, that's where the uh, transparent UV paint starts. So instead of having a physical material UV band, we just paint, paint it. Looks much nicer, it's lighter, and then every probably three years you just can repaint it on top to restore the qualities of the UV protection. Chip is up in the air, nicely furled. Uh, it went really well, no issues at all, and the jib looks super nice out of the box. So at the moment, I'm super happy. So two sails done, both look great. Let's hope the rest look as good as the first ones. So the third sail on the list is done, and that was stay sail. Uh, stay sail was a bit a bit tricky to to get it up, let's say, because we had to use the cable of the old stay sail. So we had to basically unfurl the sail, the old sail, drop it on deck, stretch it out, remove the cable, and do the same and fit the cable to the new, to the new stay sail. And the uh, stay sail is actually longer than the boat, so it becomes quite a tricky operation to managing to getting the cable in while, while sailing, basically. Now we are on our way to Palma. It's still probably like 350 miles to go and there's no wind. <laughs> so our sea trials are slowing down a bit. And then as soon as we get a nice moment, we're gonna try the Co Zero and the Janneker. But that will all depend on the timings and the wind, of course. Second day of our sea trials slash delivery. We're less than 200 miles from Palma and we finally got some wind. At the moment, as you can see, we're going with the jib and the main up and just like a half an hour ago, we unfurled the Code Zero for the first time, had a good look at it, furled it up and we left it. So now we're sailing with Code Zero furled and up in the air and the jib. So the very good thing about having a kind of a delivery sea trial is that it gives us a lot of time to fine tune all the little details. So we had time to drop the main, retention the battens, let's say furl the jib and change the, the sheeting position, uh, adjust the lashing on the code zero, leech lines, luff lines. So we have plenty of time to adjust every little thing on the sail. So we are sure that when I step off the boat, everything is how it should be. So the only sail that we haven't tried yet is the, is the IFS uh, Janneker. But it's all the way up into Palma, so not really perfect Janneker conditions. But I'm pretty sure when we're going to go into the Bay of Palma, we're just going to go downwind for an hour and have a look at it. So stay tuned. Early this morning before coming to the Bay of Palma, we had a IFS up, had a nice little run, checked how it furls, unfurls, how the shape looks, and it looks spectacular. I'm sure you'll see in the video, the orange with the gray logo, is mind-blowing how good it looks. This is the largest IFS downwind Jenniker. The critical factor was that it should be easy to use, so that means not hard to furl. And it isn't, it actually, yeah, there's some luck here as well, we have, to, we have to admit, but luck, engineering, science, craftsmanship and skill 
gave us a sale that furls extremely well. We're very, very happy. I'm slightly surprised at how well it furls, and that's the critical component for an easy to use sale. So usually in a sea trial, I come back with probably at least 100 pictures, and I can take pictures after a year, after a two, after a three, so we can track how the shape changes and, and all these things, so it's very interesting for the future just to collect information. Now with me I have a list of things to do and also a list of things that I like. So I'll go back to the loft, sit down with the team and we will discuss how we can proceed with the, with the little warranty jobs, little modifications and, and those little upgrades that we need to be sorted out. So we'll try to sort it out as soon as we can so the boat is free to leave for their summer adventures. I think as you can see from the videos from the sea trials it was not a lot of wind. So. It is great to try the sails, but it's not ideal because you want to really push them, blow them up. So we were not able to achieve that on the first sea trial. So I think after three or four weeks, I flew back to the mainland in Spain where the boat was. And then for the second time when we went, we had perfect sea breeze conditions, 14, 15 knots. So that is exactly what you want. You know? It's easy for a sail to have its given shape you know, hours after it's been taken out of the bag and it's brand new. That's not a proper test. The proper test is after a year when the sail's been reefed countless times, it's seen five knots and 50 knots, and it's been stuffed in and out of a bag, furled and unfurled a hundred times. That's when a testament to our good work or not will come. We aim to see the sails at least once a year and we take our pictures, and it's hopefully in the same conditions with the same rig setup, and we compare that to the design shape and see how the sail is aging. Fortunately, one of the strong points of 4T is that, like a good wine, it ages very well. Wally 100 sales process has been fascinating, absolutely fascinating, and I'm a person that thoroughly enjoys learning from other people and incorporate that learning in an intelligent way. The most gratifying has been working with so many intelligent, smart, clever people from different lofts and seeing it all come together. So for me it was really interesting to see working directly how all people come to one solution also because for me it's very important to understand why nobody's hide secrets between, between us. So you can learn a lot in, in this project because everybody is sharing a lot. Este proyecto, como, como comento, ha sido un reto desde el cero al 100%. Me ha enseñado a trabajar con mayor calidad y a trabajar con mayor uh, precisión y a, a evitar improvisaciones. Ha sido muy gratificante, aparte es un, es, es un reto superado, es un, es un aprender cada día cosas nuevas. A cualquiera que le digas que has hecho este tipo de barco y este tipo de vela, creo que es algo de admirar y que aporta mucho a la persona que ha trabajado en el proyecto. Eh, los resultados, por lo que he visto de todo, es, es bonito ver, poder ver el producto de tus velas, de tu trabajo en las velas y, y ver de que las cosas estén funcionando bien. If you've made it this far, uh, well done for having so much patience. And I hope you've enjoyed the series. It's meant to be informative. Please leave us feedback because if it's positive feedback and many people like it, then maybe we'll do it again. <laughs>